This story starts in my bedroom, a fairly cold, damp and small space. It wasn't the best room, but it was mine and I loved it. At the time, I'd been having a hard couple of weeks with my mental health, suffering from some fairly severe anxiety and stress issues. I'd suffered with anxiety all my grown-up life, but it gets more severe during times of high stress. And at the time, work was very stressful. In addition, my country was under very strict social restrictions due to the COVID-19 pandemic. All these factors combined make for a very bad situation to be taking psychedelics. But at the time, I underestimated the power of LSD and I didn't respect it as it should have. I decided in the morning to take some of the LSD I had bought online a few months ago. After a particularly difficult night, this was motivated by past positive experience that I've had with psychedelics, mostly psilocybin, which had really changed my worldview and helped a lot with my longer term mental health issues. I was aiming to get some clarity of the causes for my anxieties and potentially access some difficult truths that I was in denial about and I could use that to improve my mental health. So I took the tab unknown strength in the later morning and as I knew LSD lasts a relatively long time I wanted it to be done at a reasonable time for sleeping so I stuck it on my tongue and I let it sit for a while and then I chewed it up and swallowed at the time I didn't think much of it I just watched some miscellaneous videos on my computer after around one hour I was starting to feel the effects I felt a bit wobbly and strange and the music that I was listening to at the time started to really feel very intense and almost take over my mind. At this point, I would describe the feeling as fairly positive. I put on some of my favourite music on my phone and I went to lie down on my bed and listen. I was still alone in my room and I lived in a shared household at the time, so my plan was to largely keep myself to myself and I hadn't informed anyone else that I was going to be tripping. At around the three hour mark, I had been listening to the music for a long time and had really been entranced by it. I was experiencing intense visuals which were very geometrical and consisted of thousands of infinitely tessellating fractals. It was really very beautiful but also very intense. And at this point I felt inspired to go and create some art. So I got out my sketch pad and a pen and started jotting down endless geometric patterns combined with many, many human eyes. I was just allowing my brain to take the wheel with the drawing, almost moving the pen on autopilot, but very slowly. And at some point I went to the toilet as I had been drinking a lot of water and it was making its way through me. I remember feeling a bit anxious about this as I didn't want my housemates to notice my state and the bathroom felt very creepy to be in. I think I was stuck in the bathroom for around 15 minutes and I was struggling to function properly. And then I continued with the drawing for around a half an hour and then headed back to bed to listen to some relaxing music as I felt a little overwhelmed. Four hours into the trip and I don't remember much of what happened between the drawing and now but I remember this very vividly. I sat on the corner of my bed and suddenly, out of nowhere, I just knew that I was dead. I was suddenly 100% unequivocally convinced that I had died in my bed and I was now experiencing some sort of afterlife. At this point, I was still experiencing strong visuals, but they were almost in the background of my mind as the feeling of sheer panic set in. My perception of time slowed down to a sheer standstill and I was completely overwhelmed by anxiety and I was shaking and sweating. I looked at myself in the mirror and it felt like I was looking at somebody else. I kind of knew logically that it was me, but it didn't feel like me. It's hard to explain. And I felt completely disassociated from my body and my physical form felt more like a curiosity. And at this point, I was completely and utterly out of my depth. And from that point onwards, I was just in a state of complete living nightmare. I went and sat in the spot in my room where the heating unit was 
leaning against it and covering myself in a blanket. The physical sensation of heat was giving me a very faint kind of grounding, but I was still 100% convinced that I was not alive and this was me forever. An hour or so later, at that point, I'd just been sitting against the heater. I was trying to calm myself down by watching random calming videos on YouTube and eating some snacks. However, I was still in a complete state of fear and panic. And I can't even describe this feeling. It's completely incomparable to any level of fear that I had ever experienced prior. I didn't fear death. I feared the infinity of potential suffering that could exist. And I feared the feeling of experiencing this fear for, well, forever. And being unable to ever escape it. I could not even kill myself to end it as I was already dead, and my poor brain had just completely melted into a soup of one pure raw emotion, fear. My vision was completely tunnelled, I was shaking, and my legs were spasming, and I would imagine my heart rate was high at this point, but I didn't check. I periodically checked myself in the mirror to check if my pupils were dilated, and almost tried to convince myself that I was only high and that I would be okay but I still couldn't shake the absolute certainty of the feeling that I was dead. In fact, at this point, I had the feeling that I had died a thousand times over, and I was not even sure what that means or where that came from. So at around nine, at this point I'd been stuck in the cycle of lying in bed, leaning against my heater and occasionally using my computer to access some relaxing nature-based videos to try and soothe myself. I was urinating very frequently as I had been drinking a very high amount of water as I, for some reason, felt like it would help me. And in hindsight, I may have given myself some mild form of hyponatremia, which would have only added to my negative experience. And every time I went to the toilet, I was terrified. I found the room so, so scary as it was dark and dingy. And also, I didn't feel like it was private from my housemates and I had severe anxiety about my housemates finding out about everything when they came into the room and find my dead body. And I think the situation of being alone and feeling worried about others finding out about the trip was a major cause of all the anxiety I'd experienced during the trip. The visuals were largely over at this point, with just some residual minor disturbances. This, however, did not give me any mental relief I still felt like I was dead and I had been sent to hell. This hell for me was experiencing this feeling of completely overwhelming anxiety forever and ever. And that anxiety fed further anxiety about being anxious and then thus formed a vicious cycle that I did not have the mental fortitude to break. At this point, 18 hours had passed. Not much had changed. I felt completely overwhelmed by fear and was stuck in a constant loop of the bathroom, my bed, the heater, and trying to soothe myself with various online resources. At this point, I had not had any human contact for around 24 hours, and I felt completely insane. I didn't feel like this experience would ever end, and I had researched the duration of LSD, and saw that I was well over the expected duration for these intense effects, and in hindsight, I was no longer really tripping, but was in fact trapped in what was at this point an essentially 14 hour non-stop panic attack. And I was completely exhausted and also completely unable to sleep because my mind was racing at 10,000 miles an hour and I could only focus on these things. I was dead, I was insane and I was terrified. And time was passing incredibly slowly as I was in a constant state of fight or flight. And by now, it was very early morning of the next day, and I needed to urinate again. This time, I decided I simply could not face going into the bathroom, so I grabbed a blanket, rolled it up, and left the house. It was raining outside, and I walked around two kilometres to the nearest park. I had intended to sit in the park with the blanket, but when I got there, I realised this made no sense. I climbed up a muddy slope into some trees, nearly slipping many times as the ground was very wet, and then I urinated in the bushes. 
I stood there for maybe 15 more minutes and then decided to head back home. It took me a while to get home, and when I did, I went straight back to my bedroom. The experience of being outside was a bit nicer as the cold rain was a bit grounding, but at this point I felt so completely disconnected from my body that I felt like I was playing a third person video game. And when back in my room, I started to get more worried about how I was feeling and started to think about options. So the three options I'd given myself. Number one, jump out of my bedroom window and see what happened. It was high enough to kill me, but I was convinced I was already dead, so I wasn't sure what would happen. Option number two, go outside and call an ambulance. This was terrifying to me though, as I was worried that if I was still alive, they would strap me down in a mental asylum and I would be trapped in this state of mind forever, as I would never have the opportunity to end my life, which is far preferable to feeling like this until I died of old age. And then option number three, ask my friends or parents for help. I knew at this point that I was not in a mental place or strong enough to do anything on my own. I had some points where I felt a little more connected with reality and some less. Pervasive throughout this whole experience was the continuing pure terror. I decided I didn't want to jump out of my window as something very primal inside me, I guess my survival instinct, was against this. Even though it felt logical at the time to do it. I then decided to throw out all of my illegal substances and go outside and call an ambulance. However, when I got outside to call the ambulance, the fear of being imprisoned in an insane asylum forever was too overwhelming. And after thinking about it for around half an hour, I again returned to my bedroom. An hour or so later, at this point, after thinking some more, I decided that I would just speak to my housemate. I went out and found him and explained to him what was happening. At the time, I had a very strong feeling that he didn't exist and was just a figment of my imagination, but I figured there was no harm in speaking to him. He was helpful and comforted me, but didn't really know how to handle the situation. We watched some stuff on TV, but I had some trouble concentrating due to my mind being consumed by anxiety still. I repeatedly asked my housemate to reassure me that he was real, and he did but I still assumed that this is just what the version of him that existed in my own personal hell would say to trick me. I was feeling slightly more relaxed after having some human contact, but still a solid 9 out of 10 on the scale of fear. After sitting with my housemate for a few hours, I realised that this was not going to cut it. He tried to convince me to go to hospital, but I was strongly against it due to the aforementioned fears. I instead opted to call my parents, however I had to get him to explain what had happened on the phone as I was sobbing too much and felt completely paralysed and unable to speak. My parents were, reasonably, very concerned and agreed to come and get me and take me home with them. 28 hours into the trip and at this point I had survived the journey home with my parents who were mostly just worried about me at this point. I was finally starting to calm down as I was able to notice more that my trip was coming to an end and that the anxiety started to fade and I started to feel a little bit more normal. I eventually managed to sleep for a bit. I'm going to talk to you about the aftermath now. For a few days after this experience, I struggled getting to sleep at all. Any slight thought about the nature of reality would trigger these feelings of me being dead and everything being not real and part of my personal hell again. I felt very disassociated from my body for this period, and I had little appetite, and I did not have that many bodily sensations in general. These were, I guess, just the aftermath of an extremely long panic attack or traumatic experience, and over the course of the next few days, the recurrent panic attacks became less frequent and severe. At first I had to sleep in the same bed as somebody else, but after around three days, I started being able to sleep alone. And for the first week or so afterwards, I have had to have someone in the same building as me at all times, or I would immediately have a panic attack. And over the course of the next few weeks, I built up confidence being alone in a room, 
for longer periods of time, until I could spend large portions of the day alone. I went to the doctors and was prescribed medication to help me sleep and help with my anxiety. And I also started therapy after a couple of weeks. The trauma of the experience caused me to develop some kind of agoraphobia. And as previously mentioned, this started off as being a matter of being unable to be alone in any capacity. And after a few weeks, it was more just a case of struggling to go outside. After a month, I was able to go outside on my own for some period of time, but still struggled with public and busy places. And over the course of the next few months, I gained confidence with being able to live more independently. Following that, over the course of the next year, I gradually conquered the agoraphobia and panic attacks. At around the six months mark, I was capable of living independently and was able to move out again. I still had a few lapses where I was able to travel back to my parents for a few weeks, but these became less frequent and severe until they stopped occurring after around a year after the initial experience. And to this day, I still suffer with a very mild form of agoraphobia to do with being in places which are very far away from home or civilization, but I'm confident I will conquer this too with time. This experience completely changed my life. It was traumatic. I would, I would never wish it on anyone. I would urge everyone to respect the power of these drugs and to make sure they take them only in a safe and good space and to make sure they have a plan for the trip if it starts to head south. In hindsight, I have gained some positive things from it. My capacity for handling traumatic experiences is much, much higher now. And it forced me to come clean to my parents about my lifelong mental health issues and to seek traditional treatment for these. I still have occasionally moments of panic. And telling you this story is very difficult as it caused me to relive some of these memories. The feeling of being alive and reality existing gradually came back but it took a long time to be something that didn't bother me. I still have no proof that I am alive or that anything even exists, but I have the philosophy that it does not matter as I am capable of enjoying whatever my existence may be. If I am stuck in a personal hill, it's not so bad. I have quite a lot of fun and my life is pretty enjoyable these days. And for anyone who's experienced anything like this, it does get better. And please, be open with those who care about you and let them help you heal. Life can be great, even if it takes a year or so from you.